Vampire star sparks brilliant super outburst while gorging on its neighbor. An undead vampire star feeds on its victim, the two tug hard on this lifeblood swirling in space, then boom, and repeat. And lastly today, Brad, uh, something uh, that you've helped contribute uh, to the world of astronomy, a vampire star system. Yeah, so a really cool project. Uh, I get a bit biased, but that's fine. That's my job. <laughs> uh, led by my PhD student, Ryan. Uh, and this is cool because what it is is we think uh, you have a white dwarf, so something our, our sun will be in five-ish billion years. And it got too close to a brown dwarf, so what we call a failed star, a star... Um, a bit bigger than Jupiter. And this star got close, uh, this brown dwarf, and the gravity of the white dwarf was so strong it started to suck off the atmosphere of this other star. And as it did, it went through periodic explosions. So it's kind of like if someone took a giant vacuum cleaner, sucked it up to the Earth's atmosphere and started to suck off our atmosphere. That's kind of scary. Well, it is. And, but, you know, these, <laughs> these things happen, I guess. Um, <laughs> Obviously, well, they know, do. They, they do. We we know they happen. I think the the you, the interesting thing here is really it gives us an insight on potentially what our solar system will be like. Right? You know, we have our sun that will turn into a, a white dwarf. We have Jupiter, which is not too different. What will be the fate of Jupiter? A big question. And also because we use Kepler, so the space telescope famous finding planets, we are able to take you know, these thousands of images, essentially images every few minutes, 30 minutes, in fact, and you're able to see the really short scale, the really quick uh, activity, the quick events of it. Uh, so you can see how quickly it changes, how big it changes. So definitely an interesting insight into the death rows of some of these planetary systems. It is very cool to know that the uh, that there's images being taken every 30 minutes and there's actually some change in that. Such a, a large scale thing as a sun eating or a star eating another star um, and we're seeing changes in those 30 minute images. It's just incredible. It is and that's the, that's such a cool power of this is you can see these where normally we miss it. So it's definitely, you know, the Ryan's whole PhD was to find these things that might be hidden in Kepler and he started to find a lot and this was the first one. And so now he's in the U.S. working at the Space Telescope Science Institute, which runs Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope to do a similar thing with TESS to really, again, see what is the nature of these big explosions that are actually really quick and, as you said, change on the scale of a lunchtime. I did find Ryan's video on YouTube where he was talking about his thesis uh, and the process that went into uh, making this discovery. And what I loved at the beginning of the video was that it was a little bit of your suggestion to dive into uh, these images and find something else that might be in there. It was. I was sitting back on an airplane going from uh, San Francisco to Sydney and I'm like, oh, there's probably stuff in there we should miss. I should get Ryan to do this for his PhD. <laughs> Always oh, easier said than done. It's it's like dance look, monkey. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because you knew there was something there. The problem is you don't know what you're looking for. You don't know how you need to look for it. You don't know where it is. So it's not even like looking for a stack of you know a needle in a haystack. It's like looking for a needle and a stack of hay, but the hay's been set on fire and thrown out into space. So you don't know where to look at it. <laughs> But he's, he's done remarkably well. He got a, a good job out of it and is now finding it's working on the next batch of discoveries. It is incredible. And uh, watching through his video and he's thrown up some of the um, graphs and the discoveries that he's made uh, with it and the, the analysis that he had to go through it. Um, it's over my head, but obviously it, it works and, and it's out there, which is very cool. It is. So it's, it's a really cool thing. And it just shows, as you said, even when you take a, you know an image or look at data for one purpose, in this case, looking for planets around other stars, there's always something more to find. As I said last week, there's always a bigger fish. Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> you just don't know if it's a fish or a squid. <laughs> a vampire dwarf star is sucking the life force from its partner star, and their entanglement produced a rare super outburst. 
NASA detailed this previously unknown dwarf nova, a brief eruption from dwarf stars, in a statement on January 24. The system brightened by a factor of 1,600 over less than a day, space agency officials said in the statement, and this uncommon sighting was made by a mission targeting an entirely different cosmic population. This rare finding was made by accident, according to the research team that found the super outburst. The Kepler Space Telescope is now retired, but when it was scouring the sky, it searched for exoplanets that dimmed their parent stars as they moved across those stellar faces. Because it was designed to look for variations in brightness, Kepler was able to pick up on this super outburst. In a sense, we discovered this system accidentally, Ryan Ridden Harper, a researcher from the Space Telescope Science Institute STSCI, in Baltimore, who led the team that found the dwarf outburst, said in the statement. We weren't specifically looking for a super outburst. We were looking for any sort of transient, he added. The team members were looking through archived Kepler data when they made their finding. Only about 100 dwarf nova systems have ever been spotted, and the brightness spike of the recent finding lasted just a day. So, even if scientists are lucky enough to find this kind of cosmic needle in a haystack, they'd have to wait years or decades before a new outburst appears in the same system, according to NASA. The vampire in this celestial pairing is a white dwarf star or a compact stellar corpse. Its victim is a cooler brown dwarf star that orbits the white dwarf every 83 minutes at roughly the distance between Earth and the Moon. With only 250,000 miles kilometers between them, the gravity of the white dwarf pulls material away from the brown dwarf, forming spirals of dust and gas known as an accretion disk as it siphons in the material. This accretion disk, according to NASA, theoretically reaches a tipping point. The disk grows until the outer edge interacts with the gravity of the gouged-out brown dwarf. This heats up the material, causing the temperature to spike dramatically as it rises from about 5,000 to 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit 2,700 to 5,300 degrees Celsius in its normal state to a high of around 17,000 to 21,000 F 9,700 to 11,700 C at the peak of the super outburst, NASA explained. So, the undead vampire star feeds on its victim, the two each tug hard on this stellar lifeblood swirling in space, then boom, and repeat. The universe is always packed with surprises. A paper describing the findings was published in the October 2019 issue of the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what you think about this video. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thanks for watching.